way they customarily do. And now Jarvis, he'll get to it, streaming into the zone. And his little backhand chance. No score! Short-handed! Seth Jarvis! He stuck with it, followed the shot, and Carolina's special teams continue to be just that 4-1 Hurricanes. Welcome to the Canes Corner Podcast, everybody. I am Adam Gold. And how about that one? How about that 60 minutes of hockey tonight? So, not being given to superlatives, I think I might have missed two games this year. It's on a uh, soccer trip in, might have been Richmond. And I missed a weekend. I actually watched one on my phone, the game against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh that Carolina won. And I forget the other game that they played, but I missed that one. This was the best game that I have seen the Carolina Hurricanes play. Flat out best game they have played this year, bar none. Consider the opponent. Consider the venue. Consider the stakes, even though regular season game. Boston knew it. Boston came to Carolina five days ago and took advantage of the Hurricanes in the first period and then just choked the game out. Boston knew that if the Hurricanes won this game in regulation, that they no longer controlled their own fate for home ice advantage against a potential meeting with Carolina in the Eastern Conference Finals. Christopher, by the way, in the chat, uh, was talking about Boston's remaining schedule. Doesn't matter what Boston's schedule is. Carolina has clinched it if they win out. The Hurricanes control their spot. If you win all three games, Boston can't pass you. Right? Yes, you have more. uh, No, they each have 79 uh, games played. So each have three games left. Uh, Boston can't get ahead of Carolina if Carolina doesn't lose. And because they have the uh, more regulation wins. So Hurricanes, I'm going to re- kind of reset this. Think about who they played. Think about where they played. Think about what was on the line. Think about the start. Getting the goal waved off, which I hope the NHL has a different angle, has a clearer picture of that not being a goal because I don't know how the photos we've seen even blown up. I don't know how the photos we've seen say that was clearly not across the goal line. What have you? And I didn't like the way the first half was officiated either, but all of those things that conspired, not conspired, but all those things that were thrown into the mix The Hurricanes were the better team in the first period, not by a ton, but the better team, had the better scoring chances, gave up very little, and they dominated the game in the second period, dominated the game in the first half of the third period. All of Boston's scoring chances and all of that stuff happened late for Boston. It happened after the Jarvis shorthanded goal. It happened after Gensel made it 3-1. And on top of that, think about the ingredients that went into this game. The ingredients that went into what we saw tonight for 60 minutes. Goal one, the Svechnikov lacrosse goal, which I would have, uh, uh, I mean, to me, that was the best play of the game, right? The ingredients of that goal. The goal was just the exclamation point on that shift that was longer than two minutes. That started with Stahl, Martinuk, and Faust, I believe. And ended with Stahl, Martinuk, Svechnikov, Burns, and Slavin on for Orloff and Chatfield that spent the first half of that shift on the ice, continuing to keep the puck in the zone. Both guys played great. Best game of the year for Dmitry Orloff by a mile, and he had a four-point game. This was the best game. And all the proof you need is in the ice time. All the proof you need. Dmitry Orlov played 20 minutes and five seconds tonight. 
More than Burns? More than Slate? That might, have, might not have been more than Slavin. More than Pesci? Only Shea and Slavin played more? 20 minutes and 5 seconds, Dimitri Orloff was awesome tonight. That's the guy that Carolina paid seven and a half, seven point seven five million dollars $7.75 million for. Uh, two shots on goal, five total attempts. He had uh, a hit, a takeaway, and a block shot. Block shot came on the first Boston power play, the best Boston power play, and his shot block might have saved a goal. Don't know. Looked like Kachetkov was getting to it, but either way, you don't know if the shot, if the shot was high, it was probably going to be a goal, but Orloff got a skate to it. Tremendous game for Dmitry Orlov. Um, so you had incredible plays. The that shift, which ended in the Svechnikov lacrosse goal, which come on, it hit the water bottle. Did everything but knock the water bottle off. How do you not call that the goal on the ice? Although it hit the, you know, it's a it's a cloth covered pipe in the back of the goal. So it hit that square. That's what the water bottle leans on. So it sounded pipe. Credit to Mike Metascalco on the broadcast for saying, Svechnikov thinks it's a goal, and I do too. I don't know if he saw the water bottle move or not, but Svechnikov was signaling to the bench, that's oh, a goal, it's a goal, it's a goal. And then, I don't know, what, they play about 30 more seconds before the siren went? There you go. You know it's a goal. It's happened to the Hurricanes before. So one nothing. Two minutes and 10 seconds later. Remember how that goal started? Hard work. Two minutes and 10 seconds later, same thing. Hard-working shift. Ultimately, the puck gets back to Brent Burns at the point. Quick shot. Uh, Taravainen redirects it just wide, goes into the corner, comes back out to Slavin. I think Slavin shot it, but I don't think the shot got through. Svechnikov shoveled it over to Taravainen, who weakly but effectively slid it underneath Jeremy Swayman. 2 nothing. Hard work. Forecheck suffocating defense, all three zones, but in that particular case, suffocating in the offensive zone. Boston can't get the puck out. It stays in too long. Carolina gets the benefit, and they get the goal to make it 2 nothing. Charlie McAvoy pulled one back after Carolina killed a penalty. That power play we talked about where Jarvis and Orloff uh, each had the shot blocks. They were great on that power play, but after that power play was over, because Boston that was Boston's best power play of the game, after that power play was over, however, uh, Carolina couldn't get control of the puck enough to kind of reset. You like to get a face off if you can. Trip always talks about that. Couldn't do it. So it's really an extension of the power play, even though the goal happened about 45 seconds after the power play was over. Charlie McAvoy blast that Kachetkov came over, got his chest, uh, left portion of the chest that went in the right side of the goal. If you're looking out, um, unfortunate. But, you know, hard shot by McAvoy. Uh, you know, it's almost unlucky that that puck goes in, but it went in. Uh, so that's 2-1. Now you go to the third period and you go, all right, got to win a period here. You can't let 40 really good minutes go. And Carolina was just the same to start the third period. They had the puck. They kept the puck in the Bruins half of the rink as the Hurricanes really dominated the neutral zone tonight. And ultimately, another hard-working goal. Jake Gensel is the beneficiary. Jarvis and Orloff makes, make plays to get it to him. Uh, Gensel with like a baseball bat uh, type of a swing. And it gets through Swayman, but doesn't go across. Pavel Zaka, all he really had to do was slide the puck under Swayman and have him sit on it. And it's not a goal. Tried to whack it out of the crease. And he whacked it off Swayman and in. And that made it 3-1. And you think, all right, we got this all on lock now. Especially the way Carolina was playing. And then Gensel takes an offensive zone penalty. Um, as Probably as much unlucky as anything. But he takes it. You can't, can't have your stick in the midsection of a player skating away from you. Uh, Charlie McAvoy went down a little easy. But that's fine. Happens. He probably, uh, you know, Jake Gensel's really strong. Gensel goes to the box, and Carolina's now staring. It's about seven minutes to go, I think. Carolina's staring at a two-goal lead. Nice. A man uh, a man disadvantaged for two minutes. Not nice. 
knowing that if Boston scores, it becomes a one goal game again. And now you got to sweat it out the rest of the way. And then I think the decisive play of the game, the game, the goal, the play that ended the game. Jordan Stahl wins the uh, faceoff, the defensive zone draw. He wins it back to Jacob Slavin behind the net. Slavin hard rims it around behind the goal. Jarvis chases it down. He gets to the front of the net. He gets his uh, his shot. Uh, good save by Swayman behind the net, but Jarvis is first to the rebound, and he back comes around, we, uh, sweeps around, and backhands it off of Jeremy Swayman and into the right side of the goal for 4-1. And that ended the game. Ended the game. Uh, Want to credit Piotr Kachetkov for 22 saves tonight. Played very well. Uh, it's the first time he has played as well as he did and was not a star of the game because Carolina had so many other stars. But for the same price, he gets one. Slavin had two assists and was vintage Jacob Slavin tonight. He didn't get a star. Sebastian Ajo's 200-foot game was great. Jake Gensel's game was great. That that line defensively was spectacular tonight. They had the assignment on the Pasternak line. That's right. It was, uh, was it the Pasternak? No, it was the, uh, the Marchand. I want to confirm this. I think it was the Marchand coil geeky line. Let me get it for you real quick. Uh, no. Marchand coil geeky was stall. Uh, Pasternak, Heinen, and Zaka was Gensel, uh, Jarvis, and Ajo. Um, and I'll I'll explain why Carolina why their top lines were so good tonight uh, in a minute. Um, but we got a lot of stuff I want to get to, and we're obviously not going to be here uh, a ton of time because we have constraints. Uh, but here on the podcast, I want to give my friend Rusty Helser, who produces Stormwatch and Aftermath and the games and does everything for our radio station, unbelievable what he does. He put me in the greatest mood by playing Bumping Back. I I was so blown away by it and so into the song now. I can't play it because we don't have these kind of rights on YouTube. Um, But he played Breakdown by Tom Petty. And it's just got this great guitar, just, I mean, vibe to it. Phenomenal song. Anyway, it just put me in a great mood. So I'm in a great mood, even even with the Hurricanes winning like this. I'm in a better mood because I've heard the song. It was incredible. All right, I want to go through some players tonight. I want to go through some, uh, we're not going to spend a ton of time, but we're probably going to highlight a couple, right? So let's start with my first star of the game, Andrei Svechnikov. And I see a lot of you. And by the way, shouts to you in California. Shouts to you in Adelaide. Shouts to you in Perth. If you're uh, if you're still awake in Dublin, there's no way you can be. Uh, Alaska, Hawaii, Virginia Beach, Outer Banks, wherever you are, checking out the Canes Corner podcast here on YouTube. I thank you very much. Tell your friends, subscribe, like, do all that stuff. Um, we do it because we love it, uh, and we do it because you like it. So. Let's just uh, let's just keep the train rolling. We have about I've got I've already budgeted in my life all the way through the middle of June for this. So let's go. I'll sleep in July. Let's talk about Andrei Svechnikov, because a lot of you people have mentioned how good Andre was. I texted Trip during the game and I said, this is the best he's looked in a long time. And here's why I like it. It's not about the goal. The goal was great. It wasn't about the goal against Columbus. The goal was great. It's about the other things tonight. And when Andre does it the right way, and this is why he might have to stay with Stalin Martinuk, when Andre does it the right way, and he's not caught up in the... Uh, in retaliation and being baited into being the other Andre, he can be this. He can be this guy. I said it during the aftermath. There are two players on the Hurricanes that legitimately, of of the way the team is currently constructed, there are two players who change the calculus of this team. 
Andre is maybe the most important of them to get to his game because Andre hasn't been on top of his game for, he said she's shown fits and, and, you know, uh, starts of it. He had that run where he was getting about, you know, a point and a half a game for uh, two and a half, three weeks when he was playing with Ajo when that line was on fire. And I wouldn't be completely shocked to see him back there at some point, except I wouldn't break that up. And I don't think Rod Brindamore will. But Andre can be an impact player, a severe impact player, if he just stays playing the right way, to use Rod's phrase. And second game in a row, he did it the right way. He didn't do dumb things with the puck, didn't do dumb things with his stick, didn't retaliate, didn't take the bait. Used his body, was physical. His best quality in the offensive zone, apart from his, you know, offensive skill, is his puck retrieval. That was key on the on the first two goals because he was on the ice for. Uh, he might not have, might not have retrieved the puck on the first on the second goal, on the Taravani goal, but on the goal where he ultimately scored, Andre was a huge part of it. So. This was a great Andre Svechnikov performance. And if you told me that I was going to get this Andre in the playoffs, as long as the Hurricanes are not just like beset with injury after injury after injury, I'm telling you the Hurricanes are going to play into the 20s of games. You do the math. The max you can play is 28 in the playoffs. You tell me this is going to be Andre, Hurricanes are going to be playing into the 20s. Because he can be that good. And the other player, by the way, even though he was not one of my stars tonight, was Tavo, is Tavo Teravonen. And again, I thought you saw great Tavo. And I know Andre would probably like to go back with Natchez and Kuznetsov for a lot of reasons. But I think Tavo Teravainen fits there better for them, for the team. Because Tavo gives that line offensive cover that they did not uh, display, or I'm sorry, defensive cover that they did not display when Andre was there. I thought Natchez had a couple of occasions tonight where he made very good defensive plays. Uh, there was one time he came back on a play into the defensive zone. Uh, he circled back at the top of the zone, offensive zone, to make sure that there was cover uh, when one of the D-men pinched. I think just a lot of really good things from Natchez uh, the last few games, and I think we're starting to see uh, Kuznetsov come out the other side of the wall that he hit. I'm not surprised. I keep using this example. When Justin Williams came back after not starting the year, the second year of this Brindamore era, when he came back, into January, he was really good for the first couple of games. That was adrenaline. And then he hit the wall, and it was about two weeks of the wall. And he came out on the other side. I think we're there with Kuznetsov. I thought he was a much better player tonight. That line got a couple of defensive, uh, you know, had early defensive assignments, and then a little bit throughout the game of dealing with the Pasternak line. And it was it was spotty. But they were effective. It was mostly Stahl, Fost, rather Stahl, Svechnikov, and Martinuk that had the posture knock line. Most of it, most of the time, it was them. Uh, but since that line, uh, at least uh, Stahl and Martinuk didn't play a ton. It was in the 13s, I think. Svechnikov played more. Um, I thought the uh, Kuznetsov line held their own. And that's really what you're going to ask them to do. When you're on the ice against those types of players, hold your own. Uh, and they did. All right, I, w- I mentioned earlier. So we, we we went through Andre. I didn't give you all the, the, uh, all the stats. Um, Andre had uh, seven shot attempts. He had two hits in the game as well. Seth Jarvis, my second star. Now we talked about the most impactful play of the game uh, was that goal that put the game away. Andre, the bookends, the Andre goal, the lacrosse goal to make it 1-0, and the Jarvis goal to make it 4-1. Uh, 
incredible bookends for this game. Uh, Jarvis had the goal. He had six shots. He had three other attempts. Uh, he had he was a plus two. He had three hits, a takeaway, and the block shot. And he could have had four goals tonight. Just a special, special performance from an incredible player who keeps getting more expensive. <laughs> Maybe this is why the Hurricanes are signing all their draft picks and they just uh, signed a guy out of the Finnish League who clearly is going to come over here and probably play in a fourth-line role next year. They are trying to get as much cheap talent as they can at the bottom of the lineup so they can afford Seth Jarvis's contract for next year. Because if you're the Hurricanes, you don't want to give this two years of a bridge deal to come back. You just don't. Dynamite. Dynamite game from him. My gosh. Ajo Gensel and Jarvis is awesome. Awesome. What a line. All right. Now to the what Carolina's top line did to Boston's top two lines. So Ajo's line had the uh, Coyle, Marshan geeky line. Um, and it was mostly Stahl's line, but a combination of Stahl and Kuznetsov's line that had, it had drew the assignment on uh, Pasternak with uh, Zaka and I forget the center in there, but I, it doesn't really. Oh, um, Heinen. So Boston's top two lines, let's just use the uh, natural stat trick, Corsi for, Corsi against. 720. So they were a minus 13 Boston's top two lines against Carolina's top two lines. Expected goals was 0.13 for Boston, 0.88 for Carolina, and it had the goal. The uh, the Gensel goal was against them. So that's how impressive a defensive performance. And that's what Rod Brindamore is going to go home or on the plane right now. And even though he downplayed it in the uh, in the aftermath, this was a defensive clinic put on by Carolina against one of the best teams in the entire league. On their ice, in a game that they, I'm sure they wanted to win. They they just saw their uh, lead over Florida go from five to three. Carolina's lead went down from five to three against the Rangers. Uh, I don't think Carolina's catching the Rangers because I think the Rangers are going to win at least two more games the rest of the way. The Islanders scored three goals in the first period uh, and then won it four to two at home. Uh, Islanders, by the way, is probably going to be the matchup for Carolina. So if you enjoyed it last year, I don't know. Maybe you'll enjoy it again. Uh, but man, what a what what a heck of a game! Let's run through. Let's like rip through a couple of more a uh, couple of more things. Penalty kill went three for three. I think it's now killed twenty two in a row since Washington scored three times in the power play in D.C. Now almost three weeks ago. Uh huh. Yep. I'll say what I've been saying for how many months? Really, years? Get to the playoffs. That's what you want the most, the penalty kill. Power play, it'll get its goals. Carolina's power play, we only had two chances tonight. One very good. They were consecutive, too, which really hurt. Uh, a couple of chances. Nothing, nothing spectacular. Um, but the penalty kill? Yeah, three out of three tonight. Um, Piotr Kachekov. The goal, not his fault, although I'll bet you Pierre thinks he should have had it. It hit him in the chest. Uh, great shot by McAvoy and Kachetkov. I thought what got a little bit of a slow start. Maybe didn't read the play quite as well. It was kind of weird anyway. Uh, not to mention, uh, looked like there might have been somebody taken down, in, like a defenseman taken down in front of him. Um, but McAvoy got into the Ovechkin spot and uh, ripped the slap shot off of Kachetkov's, uh like left pectoral, uh, but he because he wasn't square to the shot and he was angled, it goes off his chest and goes in the side of the goal. So that was the only goal given up. He actually get, made the initial stop. 22 saves tonight. He is 18, 7, and 3 since that game in Ottawa. 
always use it and I'll use it forever because it's it it was a significant turning point in his season. He was obviously mediocre to that point. And he has had some stinker games, not some, a couple of stinker games since then. The Islander game right before the holiday was a bad game for Kachetkov. He allowed in three bad goals in that game. Uh, the third period at home against Winnipeg, he wasn't good. He was good in Washington, but weird circumstances saw them score six goals on him. So I bring that up for this reason. His save percentage since December 12th in Ottawa is 924. That's one of the best in the league. The Hurricanes right now, if you had told me on no on Thanksgiving Day, hey, Adam, don't tell anybody this, but the Hurricanes are going to have one of the best goaltending tandems in the NHL by the time we get to April hockey. I would have thought you were stoned. They might have the best tandem. It's that good. Freddie Anderson allows nothing. And Kachetkov has been a top five goalie in the NHL since that December 12th game at Ottawa. He's been that good. Uh, now the Hurricanes have three games remaining, St. Louis, Chicago, and Columbus. Uh, if St. Louis wasn't eliminated from the playoffs tonight, or they might be uh, by the end of the night, but uh, they'll be eliminated soon. I think the magic number for Vegas to clinch the playoff spot, they're the they're the eighth seed now at the West. The West is going to be crazy in the playoffs. Um, I think the, uh, the Blues are going to miss the playoffs. Carolina's got three non-playoff teams left. I do think you might see... Uh, I, I don't think they'll do it on the last game. I actually think they'll play pretty much their whole lineup in Columbus for the last one. But I wouldn't be completely shocked if they get to Chicago on Sunday and that's where you see Scott Morrow take a take a turn. You know, maybe you get Morrow and D'Angelo to be your third pair in that game. Uh, or you bump Chatfield and Orloff up and you give Shea and Pesci a day off. I wouldn't be completely shocked to see that because it's been a while since D'Angelo played. You want to get Morrow in a, into a game if just in case you need to use him in the postseason. And you might want to get these guys, a couple of your, you know, your heavy workload guys, some rest. But I think that would probably come in one of the next two games more likely than the last one because if the Hurricanes don't start the playoffs until... Let's just say Sunday. You're going to play Sunday, give a bunch of guys off Tuesday, and then have like some of your best players not play for a full week? Yeah. I don't think Rod wants that. So I think if you're going to see rest, I think you'll see it in Chicago. That'll be the most likely spot for it. Um, man, there were, there were, <laughs> this was such a game, such a heck of a game. Uh, by them. 50 wins on the season. Seth Jarvis gets his 30th goal. Uh, hopefully, Andre will get to 20. Jake Gensel's on 28. Obviously, only six of them, I think, with Carolina, but still he's got 28 goals in the season. I'd love to see him get 30. Tara Vinen scored his 23rd, I think, tonight. Uh, who's at what, 35? Uh, the goal total this year in Vegas was 36 and a half. He needs two of those. To, to uh to clear that barrier. Um, but just top to bottom, such a solid, solid performance all the way around. Uh, and again, I think their best game when you consider who they played, where they played, when they played, what was on the line, had to overcome some goofiness in the first period. Tremendous. This is the kind of game where people who think that the hurricanes, and maybe I'll big picture this and we'll close it up. This is the kind of a game where the people who believe that the Hurricanes are bona fide Stanley Cup, not just contenders, but favorites. And I spoke to somebody today who believes that they are the team to beat in the East. I'm not saying that they are saying that. 
but I think they're among them. This is the game that they point to and go, that's why. This is why. Because they keep coming and keep coming and keep coming and put all the pressure on you in your zone and in the neutral zone. You can't score on the power play against them. Tampa would like a word. Best power play in the sport, Tampa. And we saw that on display a long time ago, but we saw it on display. And now they've got the goal scorer that they haven't had. Even though he hasn't been scoring a ton of goals, he will. Jake Gensel. And you get Andre back. And you've got Jarvis playing like this. We didn't have this Seth Jarvis in the playoffs last year. We didn't have Andy Andre in the playoffs last year. So, uh, anyway, with that said, whew, brought to you by the Aluminum Company of North Carolina. If it's for the exterior of your home, you can find it at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Hamlin Road in Durham. No place like it. Sammy Hatter's crew do an amazing job. You should check them out online for all your home improvement needs for the exterior of your home. Siding, roofing, windows, entry doors, storm doors, gutter helmets, awnings, railings, breezeways. I don't know what they're calling. I have no idea what the, what they call it. Uh, it sounded to me like a drink. With that said, we got to get out of here. Appreciate your time. Re- subscribe, like, caress, tell your friends, review, rate, and we'll see you Friday night after the Hurricanes and the St. Louis Blues be a little later because, you know, central time is that way. Uh, Until, have a good night, everybody.